A simply supported beam with a rectangular cross section carries a uniformly distributed load over its entire length. If the beam experiences the maximum bending stress, which is 10 times the maximum transfer shear stress experienced by it, then the ratio of the beam to depth of its cross section we have to find out. Again for this case we have to first calculate what is the maximum bending stress which is expressed as maximum bending moment multiplied by C that is the distance of top fiber or bottom fiber which one is same for rectangular section divided by I and the maximum shear stress will be equal to maximum value of shear force divided by area that is the average shear stress multiplied by 3 by 2 in the case of rectangular section. And in the numerical the maximum value of a bending stress to maximum value of a shear stress is given as 10 times. So this ratio is known and we have to calculate what is the ratio of the length of the beam to depth that is we have to calculate L divided by D. So first of all we will identify in the case of simply supported beam with a UDL where we have a maximum value of the bending moment and the shear force. So let's consider here we have a UDL of span equal to L and the UDL has a bend equal to W. So in this case the reaction will be equal in both the support that is equal to WL divided by 2. Here also we have reaction equal to WL by 2. Number of questions we have solved on UDL only. So we are knowing here that the shear force diagram will be look like this. We have shear force at A is a maximum value that equal to WL by 2 or at A B is a maximum value that is equal to WL by 2. So here the maximum value of a shear force is V max is same as equal to V is equal to W into L divided by 2. The shear force will change the sign at point C where we have the distance AC is equal to L by 2 and the area of this triangle will give you the maximum value of the shear stress at point C. So this value of shear force is maximum at A but the bending moment is maximum at C. So we have maximum bending moment is equal to MC is same as the area of triangle. Area of triangle is same as 1 by 2 WL by 2 into L by 2. That is we have WL square divided by 8. Maximum shear force is WL by 2. Maximum bending moment is WL square by 8. And now we can calculate here for the given rectangular section what is the value of maximum bending stress and the maximum shear stress. In the case of rectangular section of width equal to B, depth equal to D, the shear stress distribution is shown here and we have maximum value of a shear stress at the neutral axis is given as maximum value of a shear force which is WL by 2 divided by area of a rectangle is B into D multiplied by 3 by 2. So we can calculate here the maximum shear stress and the maximum value of the bending stress will occur on top fiber or bottom fiber for that we have C value is same as equal to D by 2. So let's substitute here and we'll calculate here the maximum bending stress. So in this case we have maximum value of bending stress sigma B max equal to maximum bending moment is W into L square divided by 8. Then we have to multiply by C which is equal to D by 2 and divided by moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is B into D cube divided by 12. So we have 12 divided by 16. In that case we will get this value as 3 by 4 multiplied by UDL W multiplied by L square. One of the D will be get cancelled and in denominator we have B D square. In the similar way we can calculate the maximum shear so we have tau max is equal to the maximum value of the shear force is W into L by 2 divided by area. Area is same as BD so divided by BD and further multiplied by 3 by 2. So we get here 3 by 4 so we have 3 by 4 W into L divided by BD. And here given the ratio here that is the maximum bending stress to shear stress ratio is given as 10. So sigma b maximum is 3 by 4. So this also 3 by 4 that will be get cancelled. One of the value of w will also cancel l square by l. So one value of l is left. b is also get cancelled d square and d. So l by d must equal to 10. 
So the required ratio will be equal to L by D is equal to 10. 3 by 4 is cancelled, W is cancelled, one of the L will be cancelled. In denominator B will cancel, one of the D will cancel. So we'll directly get this ratio equal to L by D. And this ratio is same as the maximum bending stress to maximum shear stress. A timber beam of a rectangular cross section is simply supported at the end, carries a concentrated load at the mid span. The maximum longitudinal stress sigma is equal to 12 megapascal, that is the bending stress is given, and the maximum shear stress is 1.2. Again, we have to calculate the ratio of the span to the depth for a rectangular section. But this time we have simply supported beam and the load is changed. We have concentrated load instead of UDL that we have done in the last numerical. So maximum bending stress is maximum bending moment multiplied by C divided by I is given as equal to 12 megapascal and the maximum shear stress here is given as average shear stress multiplied by 3 by 2 is equal to 1.2 megapascal. Indirectly this ratio is given as 10. We have just solved here one numerical in which we have a simply supported beam and the load at the center then we have shear force is a rectangle and the maximum value of a bending moment will occur at C that will be FL by 4 and the maximum shear force is same as F by 2. For rectangular section the value of C will be D by 2 and we have length is equal to L, width is equal to B. So we have sigma B maximum that is the maximum value of bending stress equal to the maximum value of bending moment is F into L divided by 4. Value of C for rectangular section is a depth divided by 2 and the moment of inertia is BD cube by 12. So we have BD cube divided by 12. So we have 12 divided by 8 is 3 by 2 multiplied by F multiplied by L and one of the D will be get cancelled. So we'll get this here divided by BD square. And this value is same as equal to 12 megapascal. In a similar fashion, we can calculate the maximum shear stress, the max, same as V max, and V of V max is equal to F by 2. So we have F by 2 divided by area. Area will be same as B D multiplied by 3 by 2. So in this case, we have tau max equal to 1.2 equal to F. So we have 3 by 4 times of B D. So let's take the ratio this time. We have maximum bending stress to maximum shear stress is equal to 12 divided by tau max. Tau max is 1.2. Maximum bending stress here is 3 by 2. So we have 3 divided by 2 multiplied by F into L divided by B D square multiplied by shear stress will be 3 by 4 F by B D. So 4 times of B D will shift in numerator divided by we have F but we have 3 times of F 12 divided by 1.2 is equal to 10. So 3 and 3 will cancel F and F will cancel even one of the value of B will cancel and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So in this case we have 2 times of L one of the D will cancel that equal to D is equal to 10. So we have L by D 10 divided by 2 is exactly equal to 5. Our choice C is correct choice. A simply supported beam of square cross section having side equal to 200 mm carries a central concentrated load P with one of its diagonal plus horizontal. So in this case we have rhombus otherwise the rest arrangement is remain same that is we have simply supported beam and we have load is exactly at center the maximum shear stress is equal to 18 megapascal what will be the corresponding load p on the beam in kilonewton we have to find out first part of the analysis is same that is we have simply supported beam we have central load equal to p here so instead of f we have to use p and we have reaction is f by 2 f by 2 in this case we'll get the two rectangles in the shear force diagram and we have maximum value of bending moment will be FL by 4 and the maximum shear force is F by 2. Here we have a square and the side of a square A is known that equal to 200 mm. But he says that the diagonal is placed horizontally. So in that case it will become rhombus and corresponding value of the maximum shear 
will occur from the top at distance equal to 3b by 8 and the maximum shear is same as 9 by 8 of tau average. So we can very well calculate here the area, area will be same as a square, area will be equal to same as a square, maximum shear force is equal to f by 2. So in this case we have tau max that is the maximum shear is equal to 9 divided by 8. Maximum value of the shear force is f divided by 2 and we our area will be equal to a square. So we have 9 divided by 8. The shear force f you have to find out that is the value of p you have to find out. Maximum value of the shear stress is given as 18 divided by 2 times a square. a square is same as 200 square. So in this case you will get the corresponding load p will be newton and this value is 1 to 8 0. 10 to the power 3 that will be Newton is same as equal to 1 to 8 0 kilo Newton. A link is under a pool which lies on one of the faces as shown in the figure the magnitude of the maximum compressive stress in the link you have to find out. So we have given here the cross section is 15 mm by 50 mm and we have length is equal to 500 mm. On the top surface through the centroid the force of 4 kN is passed. So this one is the centroid line. To find out here the maximum compressive stress we have to shift the force or you have to cut the section and you have to locate the centroid. So let's cut this member using this plane. So let's assume here that this one is a plane is a section plane and we'll cut at this plane. So we have width is B that equal to 15 mm. We have depth D is equal to 50 mm. Let mark here the centroid of this cross section of a cut section equal to G. So this one is the action so reaction force will be opposite in the sense. So we have a same reaction force that will be equal to 4 kN. So it will develop a tensile stress. And this tensile stress is uniform over the entire cross section. Magnitude of the tensile stress is sigma axial is equal to force P divided by area. In this case, we have force is equal to 4 kN is 4000 Newton. Area is equal to 15 multiplied by 50. That is a rectangular cross section. And this value will treat as a positive value because tension and this stress is equal to 5.33 megapascal. At both point G this force will make a clockwise moment. So on this face you have to show the anticlockwise moment. This anticlockwise moment is taking place about the Z axis. So this horizontal axis is Z axis. Vertical axis is Y axis. And we have moment here. This moment is same as the force multiplied by the vertical distance equal to D by 2. So this distance is same as D by 2 and we have d by 2 is equal to 25 mm. So this one is m actually and this m represents here the hogging and in the case of hogging you have to take the negative value. So we have minus of force f multiplied by eccentricity here that will equal to 25. So multiplied by e. So in this case we have minus 4000 and e is equal to 25. So you will get the bending moment m is equal to negative 100 into 10 to the power 3 that will be Newton mm. By Pledger formula the bending stress at point A is minus m into ya by i. y distance is same as here positive 25 and i is bd cube by 12. So we have minus m value is minus 100 into 10 to the power 3 ya value is same as equal to 25 divided by moment of inertia is bd cube we have width is equal to 15 and depth is equal to 50 so we have 50 cube divided by 12 so 12 will shift in numerator negative and negative will become positive so we have tensile stress at a that is equal to 16 megapascal if you have a tensile stress at A, then we have compressive stress at B of equal magnitude in the case of rectangular section is minus 16 megapascal. 
now we are interested here the magnitude of the maximum compressive maximum compressive is possible if we take the compressive stress in bending and the positive stress in the axial so maximum compressive stress will be equal to that will occur at point b because we have compression at b will be sigma bending at b plus we have sigma axial which one is uniform sigma bending is minus 16 sigma actually is 5.33 so approximately this value is equal to negative 10.67 mega pascal negative value indicate that it's a compressive a cantilever beam is loaded as shown in figure what is the value of the stress at point b we have length of the member is given as 500 mm and we have one point load is acting at an angle of 30 degree of magnitude 15 kilonewton. Egg modulus is given and we have circular cross section. First of all, we will resolve this process into two components. One is the horizontal component and one is vertical component. The horizontal component of the force will be called as FH and this value of FH equal to 15 and we have cos component of 30. So we have 15 cos of 30 and the vertical component will act downward this vertical component is fe is equal to 15 into sin of 30 this component will produce the bending stress at point b that is a case of sagging and fh will produce here the compressive stress at point b so the stress produced along the x direction will be the compressive stress due to fh so let's call this one is sigma axial and sigma axial will be equal to negative value of fh divided by circular area that is pi by 4 d square so we have minus of 15 that is kilonewton is 10 to the power 3 we have cos component is cos of 30 divided by circular section area is pi divided by 4 so 4 will shift in numerator and we have diameter is given as 80 so we have 80 square this stress you have to treat as a negative value and this value come out to be 2.584 that will be mega pascal we have a circular section here and this one is representing the neutral axis in that case the distance of b will be negative distance and we have distance of fiber b will be equal to minus d by 2 that is we have yb is equal to minus 40 80 divided by 2 is minus 40 mm and this value of the force fe above b will produce a clockwise moment so moment at point b will be bending moment that will be equal to fe and we have perpendicular distance is equal to l that is 500 and this one is a clockwise moment clockwise moment that is we have a hogging in the case of hogging you have to take the bending moment as a negative value we have force is equal to 15,000 that will be Newton multiplied by sine of 30 multiplied by length equal to 500 so this one is a negative mo bending moment at B is Newton mm is negative 3.75 into 10 to the power 6 that will be Newton mm and by flexure formula the bending stress at point b will be equal to minus m into the distance of fiber b that will be yb divided by moment of inertia i so we have minus bending moment is negative is minus 3.75 into 10 to the power 6 yb distance you take as a negative is minus 40 whole thing is divided by the moment of inertia for circular section is pi divided by 64 so 64 will shift in numerator and we have diameter to the power 4 that is we have 80 to the power 4 negative negative become positive and again it is multiplied by negative so this value will be negative value is negative 74.6 negative value that is a compressive stress so both axial and the bending are the compressive stress in this case so total stress at b will be equal to sigma axial plus sigma bending at point b sigma actually is same for point a as well as b 
So sigma axial is minus 2.584 and sigma bending is minus 74.6. Approximately we will get this answer very close to negative 77.2 approximately I will say. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.